Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we are going to study a numerical that is problem number 4 and it is based on solutions of differential equation in Laplace domain. Now as I told you earlier, the last three numericals or videos are completely based on a simple questions of differential equation where the initial conditions are not given as well as the questions are also similar to that because in transfer while calculating transfer function, impulse response and step response, we don't want any initial conditions to find out that both the three terms. Now, but in coming videos or in current video also what we are going to find out we have to find out output response or you can say that the current next remaining videos are completely based on output response zir and zsr zir and zsr means zero state response and zero input response but first of all what do you mean by zero input response zero input response means what it is the response just because of not the input signal it is because of the initial conditions or initial energy of the system and the zero state response means what it is the output response due to the input signal where the input conditions or initial conditions or initial energy of system is assumed or considered as a zero. So same thing we are going to use in coming three videos or in coming three numericals including the current one. So first of all what we are going to study we are in next coming through videos or next three numericals are completely based on output response zir and zir so first of all we'll study a problem number four it is based on only output response basically the output response or total response is a combination of zir and zsr so if you know how to find out zir and zsr which means you will get the idea how to calculate the total response so the current question is a problem number four Now, the problem number four, what is mentioned? Determine the output response or you can say the total response of the system having differential equation. Now, the differential equation is y double dash of t plus y dash of t minus 2y of t equal to u dash of t plus 2u of t where this u of t are nothing but this u of t is nothing but unit state. Now, some initial conditions are also given y of zero is one and y dash of zero is minus one. Now, while applying Laplace transform, we have to use or we have to write the initial conditions value, which means whenever you are going to calculate the Laplace transform of differential equation, then which formula you will prefer a bilateral Laplace transform property or la unilateral Laplace transform property. Now, here we are going to apply a Laplace transform y double dash of t. So, the question is determine output response, which means you can say that total response of system where the system is given by equation, a differential equation, I mean to say y double dash of t plus y dash of t minus 2y of t equal to u dash of t plus 2u of t, where the u of t is nothing but unit shift and it is already mentioned in your question. Next one is y double dash of t. Here already initial conditions are given and it is y0 is 1 and y dash of 0 is minus 1 and similarly u of 0 is also given and it is 1. Now, which property you will prefer over here? Basically, we have studied uh, two different properties or I can say that a uh, same property but in two different way. Which property you will prefer? Basically, we have derived differentiation property in two different ways. First one is unilateral Laplace transform where we have derived a differentiation property as well as in bilateral Laplace transform. Basically, whenever the question is asked and if it is based on transfer function step response or impulse response, always you have to prefer bilateral Laplace transform property of differentiation. But whenever a question is related to output response or you can say total response or else a ZIR or ZSR, which means over there you have to prefer a differentiation property but in unilateral Laplace transform. Here the question is based on output response or total response of system where a output or you can say initial conditions are already given which means you have to use differentiation property which is in unilateral Laplace transform. We are going to use a property of differentiation but that we have derived in unilateral Laplace transform. Now, Basically, what is the Laplace transform of y double dash of t, y dash of t and y of t that you should know. Then we will move on to next result. So, we will find out the Laplace transform of all equation and then we will find out the output response of it. Now, the question is 
y double dash of t plus y dash of t minus 2 y of t equal to u dash of t plus 2 u of t where this u of t is my input signal and y of t is my output response. If you are able to find out the Laplace transform then at the end again you have to find out the inverse Laplace transform and then you will get the output response or total response of system. So first of all what you will do we are going to apply a Laplace transform on both the sides but remember one thing your initial conditions are given which means you have to use differentiation property which is derived in unilateral Laplace transform. y double dash of t, a Laplace transform y double dash of t is a square y of s minus s y of 0 minus y dash of 0. Now, Laplace transform y dash of t is only we have to ignore or we have to reduce the power of s or you can say that here we have y double dash which means a single differentiation. So the result is s into y of s minus y of 0. Then minus 2 into Laplace transform y of t is y of s equal to look at your left right hand side u dash of t Laplace transform is s into u of s minus u of 0 and the next one is Laplace transform u of t is u of s. Now, I'll open all these brackets and after that I'll substitute the values of all the initial conditions that is y of 0, y dash of 0 in it. Now, these are the initial conditions which are given in question and this is the equation that we have derived just before. Now, what is the next step? We have to substitute all the initial condition values in uh, this equation. So, y of 0 is 1, so 1 into s is minus s, y dash of 0 was minus 1, next part is s y of s, minus y of 0, y of 0 is 1, now here you can take u of s common, so what you will get s plus 2. minus u of 0 and u of 0 is 1. Now just open all the brackets. Now what is the next step? Look at here plus 1 minus 1 will get cancelled and u of s is nothing but a Laplace transform of unit shape and it is 1 by s. So, I will substitute 1 by s value over here. Now, what is our next step? Take y of s common from left hand side. I have taken s square s and minus 2 uh, placed inside this bracket and minus s is left open so I will read over here. Next one is just do the cross multiplication what you will get this s will be multiplied over here so this will be minus s and in whole denominator we have s. Now you can say that this s and s will get cancelled so what you will get on the right hand side only 2 by s. And what is our next step? Basically, I want y of s because I have to calculate the output response only. Now, just look at here. 
on the right hand side we have a 2 by s and this value is obtained or calculated just because of zero step response zero step response means input is already given whereas on left hand side look at here we have minuses and this value you have calculated only because of initial conditions which means if i shift this minuses on the right hand side then what we'll get 2 by s minuses this 2 by s is the value which gives us a zero state response that is zsr and if i shift this minuses on right hand side and then that value will gives us a zero input response but right now in current numerical we have to calculate only the output response so no need to worry about zsr and zir we have to consider on output response only so what is our next step i'll shift these minuses on the right hand side and then i'll do the cross multiplication whatever result will be there then after i'll shift this denominator part on left hand side i'll after that we'll shift this denominator on the right hand side and then i'll move on to a partial fraction and then later on we'll find out the inverse laplace transform to calculate the output response let's see we'll find out the next part now what I have done, I have taken this minus s on right hand side. Already we have minus s value on the left hand side. If we shift it on right hand side, then that value become plus. So we have 2 by s plus s. Now just do the cross multiplication. What you will get? 2 plus s square by s and this will be on right hand side. What is on left hand side? This whole equation will remain as it is. Now what we want, I want to calculate y of s, so shift this s square plus s minus 2 on right hand side. Now what is our next part? We are going to find out a partial fraction because we want y of t. So before moving to partial fraction, we should know the factors of s square plus s minus 2. Just look at here. Here the last term is minus 2 which means we can say that it is a product of 2 and 1. So 2 into 1 is 2 but look at here, here we have the value which is plus 1 which means the 2 and 1 will give us value 1. Now here the sign is plus which means what I can say that the 2 sign is plus and the 1 sign is minus. So you can directly get this idea minus 2 is achieved or you can achieve it by just multiplying plus 2 with minus 1 and after adding plus 2 and minus 1 you will get the answer which is 1. So my factors are 2 and minus 1. What is our next step? If these are the values of s then shift these 2 and 1 on left hand side. What you will get? The factors will be s minus 2 and s plus 1. Here we have a three poles which means we will use a three different variables to find out the partial fraction. So my variables are first of all I am going to write x y of s this whole equation. So this will be my equation number one. Next part just do the cross multiplication. I will tell you the shortcut. Look at it. In A, in denominator of A, we have S. So exclude this S part. Rest of the thing you have to multiply it with A. In denominator of B, we have S plus 1. So look at it. On left hand side, just exclude this S plus 1 part. Just multiply S and S minus 2 with B. Because, why I am telling you this shortcut? Because ultimately, this S plus 1, S plus 1 will get cancelled. Now look at here. In the denominator of C, we have S minus 2. Just exclude this S minus 2 part. Remaining S into S plus 1 will multiplied with the C. So, I will tell you what will be the resultant equation. And this is nothing but my equation number 2. Now, what is our next step? I am going to substitute the values of S to calculate the values of a, b, c. Now, this was our equation. Now, what we have to do, we have to substitute the values of s to calculate the value of a, b and c. So, first of all, which term we are going to substitute? If I substitute s equals to 0, then automatically b and c term will get cancelled because as the s equals to 0, the 0 will be multiplied with the whole term b and with the whole term c. So, both these terms will get automatically cancelled, only the a term will be there. So, 
so i'm substituting s equals to zero look at here if i replace this s by zero so only two will be there on left hand side now look at here this s and this s replaced by zero so we have only one and minus two in different brackets now this s and this s is replaced by zero so whole product becomes zero so i'm writing only single zero look at here minus two into one is minus two and if you shift this minus two on left hand side the two two will get cancelled we have only the result that is minus one only similarly substitute s equals to minus one so that this a term and this c term will get cancelled you will get the value of only b now if i substitute s equals to minus one on the left hand side look at here minus one square is one and one plus two becomes three now look at here if this s is replaced by minus one then minus one plus one becomes zero and zero into whole term becomes zero so a term will not be there in my next step now look at here also minus one plus one also gives a zero value and zero into c is zero so only b equation will be there look at here the first of all we have a simply s so this will be minus one now minus one minus two now minus one into minus three gives us a plus three so we have a three on left hand side and right hand side it is a three b and if i shift this three on left hand side what you will get three three gets cancelled and we have only one on left hand side so my b value is one similarly do the same thing for c now which term you are going to substitute to find out the value of c of course s equals to plus two if i substitute s equals to plus two this b term and this a term will get removed let's see the next part substitute s equals to two in above equation or that is this is our equation number two now look at here on left hand side this is s square so two square becomes four and four plus two is six so six is on left hand side now if i substitute s equals to 2 so 2 2 will get cancelled this bracket will give us a 0 result and 0 into anything is answer is 0 similar look at here also this s is replaced by 2 so 2 2 2 minus 2 becomes 0 and whole b term also replaced by 0 so i'm going to write only single 0 now here this s is replaced by 2 so this s is also replaced by 2 so 2 plus 1 becomes 3 and 3 into 2 we have a 6 c on the right hand side now shift this 6 on the left hand side the 6 6 will get cancelled so my c result is 1 what is our next step substitute all the values of a b c in equation number 1 so we have a value we have already calculated that is minus 1 b is 1 and c is 1 now what you are going to do of course we want output response so of course we will apply inverse laplace transform on both the sides la inverse laplace transform of y of s is y of t now i'll take minus sign outside 1 by s inverse is u of t now s is delayed by 1 which means we will use a frequency shifting property so plus 1 will be replaced by minus 1 and that will be multiplied with t which is in power of e and last one is 1 by s and it is nothing but a unit step now again here we have minus 2 because s is replaced by or s is shifted by minus 2 so what you will do we will use a frequency shifting property and we will multiply opposite sign value with a t so it is 2t and 1 by s is unit step you can stop here also because this is the result but if you want then you can take u of t common which is in each and every term so u of t is there in each and every term so i have taken common so this part the first part will be replaced by minus 1 the second part 
we have e to the power minus t and the third part only the e to the power minus 2t is left and this is our solution so this is how we are going to calculate the output response but look at the solution just go through the solutions what was there the y of s equation including y of s the left hand side is having some initial conditions and the right hand side we have only the input conditions so on the right hand side whatever equation was there that equation will gives us a zero state response and the left hand side including y of s one more term was there which is due to the initial condition and that term will give us a zero input response but if we combine both the things then you will get the output response so this is the equation of output response now we'll study a new numerical in next video and that will be based on zsr and zir so thank you for watching this video stay tuned with ekid and subscribe ekid for further more videos thank you so much